Okay, so in this video we're going to um, do some examples of calculating Galois groups. And we're going to do pretty simple ones. We're going to do quadratics, we're going to do biquadratics, and we're going to do even quartics. Uh, we're not going to go into cubics because that's a whole different game. They're a bit more, they're more complicated basically. Okay, so we'll start with the quadratic. Um, so, quadratic. So if we take an um, arbitrary quadratic in um, in a field, so we'll we'll be general. We won't we won't say which field we're in. We'll say we're in a general field. So f of x is a polynomial, and it's an element of uh, the ring of polynomials with coefficients in our ground field, which is f. Okay. So let's say f of x is a quadratic. So it's equal to x squared plus ax plus b, where a and b are elements of f. Okay, so there is our quadratic, and what we want to do is we want to find the Galois group of this. So let's firstly find the splitting field of this. So k is the splitting field of f. Field of f, and of course, oh, I should have said this is the start actually, splitting field of f. Uh, this is assumed to be irreducible. If it was reducible, if its solutions, if its roots were in F, then this is all trivial. Um, so we're assuming it's irreducible. You cannot break this down any further uh, in this ring up here. Okay, so um, so it doesn't it doesn't factor into linear factors in that ring because it's a quadratic. The next step would be straight away to factor it into linear factors. You cannot do that in this case. Okay, so um, what we then do is we have an incredible trick up our sleeve for quadratics. We have the quadratic formula. Now the incredible thing is that the quadratic formula does not use anything that is specific to the rational numbers. It works in any general field because all we're saying is we're saying take this polynomial. Oh well it works in nearly every field. There is one field in which it doesn't work and I'll show you why which is quite cute really. Um, so. Um, if we, we, what we're saying is, we can factor this. There is some element two, and we can say, let's look at this. So all we define two to be, we define it to be the multiplicative identity plus the multiplicative identity. So that's what two is defined to be. And then because two is an element of the field that is not the additive identity. The multiplicative, ident the multiplicative inverse exists. Now, this assumption is wrong in one field, which is the field of two elements, so the field C2. Why? Because when you add 1 to 1, you get 0 in this field. So you get the additive identity, so its multiplicative inverse doesn't exist. So that's the one field in which this does not work. Okay, so now, if we look at this in this field, uh, in our arbitrary field, and we're assuming it's not, assume f is not this field, f is not z mod 2, 2, and therefore 2 exists, and therefore, sorry, therefore uh, the multiplicative inverse of 2 exists. Okay, um, so if we now look at this and expand it out, well, this just means x a plus a of 2 times x plus a over 2. And then we can use the distributive property of fields to multiply this out to a over 2x plus a over 2x plus a squared over 2 squared. OK, so uh, now what we can use is we can use the distributive property. We can factor out um, an a and we can get a half plus a half x plus a squared over 2 squared. And now what we want to do is we want to work out, oh, we can actually take this further, can't we? Uh, we can factor out a half out of here. We can factor out the multiplicative inverse of 2. And then what we get is 1 plus 1 x plus a squared over 2 squared. And then this is equal to 2. So the 2 and the multiplicative inverse of 2 cancel out and you get ax plus a squared over 2 squared. Okay, so that's all you've done so far. 
And then basically what we can say is that this therefore factors into x plus a of 2 squared plus b subtract off the bit that you get from here. So this gives this. So if we wanted to equal this, we have to add b and we have to take off this thing, 2 squared. So we're just adding the additive inverse is equal to 0. And then we can just take this to the other side. And we can say a squared over 2 squared minus b. So we need some element which is which squares to give this. And then we have this quadratic formula, this famous formula. Um, x equals um, the square root of a squared minus b, and it's over 2 squared. So you can pull out the 2 squared as well, and you can put the 2 squared up here, which will define to be the symbol 4, and um, then you get this formula, minus a over 2, oh dear, what's that doing there, plus, and of course, um, there are, it can be the, if you have, dear, if you have um, any elements, then it's square, then the negative of it also squares to that, that's just basic, you can prove that very easy, so if x squared is equal to something, then we can take negative of x squared, and because we can factor this into minus 1 times x squared, and then by the distributive property, uh, this is, uh, well, not by the distributive property, by the commutativity of multiplication, you can turn this into minus 1 times minus 1 x squared, and um, then what you need to do is, what's this? So what is the, multipli uh, the additive inverse of 1 multiplied by the additive inverse of 1? Well, you can factor out... Um, no, you can't. Uh, how do you work out that? OK, so you need to prove that that is equal to 1. And how would you prove that? Why is the additive inverse... Hmm... How do you prove that? Um, oh, of course, yes, um, because, hmm, I'll think about that and talk about that in a moment. I've caught myself out a bit doing that. Okay, so, um, so basically this formula holds true that uh, x is equal to uh, negative a over 2 plus or minus the square root of um, a squared minus 4b over 2. So this formula holds true in an arbitrary field. Therefore, the field extension, all we need to do, this is an element of your ground field. This is not an element of your ground field. So this thing has to be added on. Um, so all we need is we need, uh, not f the rationals, we need the field, and we need to join on this root, this element here. And then, you're in this field, you'll have, um, you'll have a0 plus a1, the square root of a squared minus 4b. Um, and basically, where both of these elements are, ai is an element of the field. And basically, you can add any element in there, you can multiply any element in there. All you need to know is that when you multiply this by itself, it gives you a squared minus 4b, which is an element of f, so it's closed under multiplication. The polynomial splits in there, both of the solutions, both of the roots are within this. Um, and now what we know is because this is a Galois extension, Galois extension of f, um, f then the field automorphisms map the generators, map the roots, which are the generators, map the roots onto roots. Um, so we didn't actually use a root as a generator here, but we know exactly what the root is in this case. So we know that phi of, um, phi of a negative a over 2 plus the square root of a squared minus 4b over 2 must go on to um, negative a over 2 
minus the square root. Now, of course, you can have the identity as well, uh, minus over that. And basically, what we're going to now do is we're going to use this to work out where every other element goes. Because, because phi fixes the ground field, we can split this into um, negative a over 2 plus phi of the square root of a squared minus 4b over 2 is equal to negative a over 2 minus the square root of a squared minus 4b over 2. And from that, you can deduce that phi of the square root of a squared minus 4b must equal negative the square root of a squared minus 4b. So now you know where this one basis element must go uh, if it's going to map roots onto roots. Of course, it might make more sense to have generated the field from the root so that the root was the basis, uh, but we didn't do that. So um, in this case, uh, that is the field automorphism there. Um, okay, so, um, so the Galois group, therefore, Galois group of the splitting field over the ground field consists of firstly the identity map, which maps uh, every element onto itself, and then this element which switches the sign of the um, coefficient in front of this uh, square root term here. Uh, and that's, those are the only two options you have, uh, because you only have one basis element, so you can only... Um, well, um, mm, you, you only have um, two roots, so you can only keep them either the same or you can switch them around. So you have this um, transposition, transposition I'll call it, and you have the identity element. And those are your Galois group. And when you compose those together, it forms a group isomorphic to Z2, or if you prefer, a uh, cyclic group on two letters. So that's the Galois group of a quadratic uh, polynomial.